welcome to this uh, last lecture on the course on noise control in mechanical systems with me professor Sneha Singh. So, we have been uh, discussing about the last module in this lecture series where we have been discussing about the various kind of case studies where we utilize our knowledge gained in this course and try to control the noise of the and apply this knowledge in order to find the noise control strategies in some typical real life mechanical systems. And within this we have done a case study of a passenger car, a premium passenger car, then the case study of a passenger train. And this is the last case study for this particular lecture course where we will discuss about an HVAC system in a building and what are the typical noise sources in that HVAC system and how can we bring the noise level down. And this will conclude and with a small vote of thanks. So, uh, this is a case study of an HVAC system in the Haridwar district of Uttarakhand and we are keeping the location anonymous to maintain confidentiality. So, as you can see this is the typical HVAC plant. So, you have a big building that has got centralized HVAC and this is the power control house of that HVAC system of the building. And there are a lot of you know ducts, pipes and the condensers the evaporators, the chiller units. So, lot of things are there in uh, this big centralized HVAC system. So, what are the typical noise sources within that? You have the compressors, the evaporators, the chiller units and the pumps and the ducts that might be present. So, these pumps and ducts you can see, hydraulic pumps as well as the chiller unit and the evaporators, the condensers, the cooling towers etcetera. So, when we went into that HVAC system and we measured the noise level of this, the SPL for example, one typical noise measurement I am showing to you, the SPL at a single chiller operating condition was 87.5 decibels in the Z weighting scale and this shows the one third octave spectrum of the noise measured at the chiller unit of the HVAC system. So, as you can see the noise is typically low frequency content, you can see the peaks are majorly in the 50 hertz, 100 hertz, 250 hertz and 500 hertz. So, it is usually concentrated in the lower frequency range and this is the outer unit of the HVAC powerhouse and this contains the cooling tower and the fans, the cooling tower and the other outdoor units for supplying the power to the complete system. In a very big building, uh, this HVAC system is being employed and this is the outer unit for this. So, here also you can see the various kind of noise sources such as you can see these fans and blowers and the ducts even you can see the water, the water flowing that also becomes a major noise source, the, the, the water flowing into the cooling towers. And we measured the noise level and it was around 77.4 dBz and the octave spectrum of this was somewhere around, you can see the peak around 50 hertz, 80, 315 and 500. So, once again what you see is that here in the outdoor unit where you know you have more of the fan noise and the, so the noise is both due to the structure bone as well as a lot of airborne noise. This is the fan noise and the water flowing noise. So, what you observe is that when the fan and water flowing noise is there, the overall spectrum looks a bit more broadband. The sharp peaks are not that much and you can see just these various small peaks not very sharp around 50, 80, uh, 315 and 500. So, it is mostly a broadband content whereas, for the indoor units within a reverberant environment the signal is more peaky in nature and which means that it has a higher kurtosis. So, let us see what are the mechanisms of noise generations in this typical HVAC system that can be found in for uh, sort of supporting the big buildings. So, first of all compressors let us see what are the mechanism of noise generation in the compressor units. You have 
uh, the, uh, because in the compressor it is uh, typically involves you know the flow of the refrigerants, the pressurization of the liquids etcetera. So, the cavitation becomes an important source of noise. So, whenever the refrigerant is flowing it is restricted uh, and the flow of the refrigerant gets restricted due to some kind of obstacle that might be present within the compressor unit. Some kind of dust or dirt particle or some kind of manufacturing defect as well or just accumulation of gravel etcetera. Then what will happen is that this uh, will create more cavitation. Cavitation can be thought of that when some kind of liquid is flowing through some kind of system like a duct or a pipe and uh, there is obstruction to the smooth flow of the liquid. Then the bubbles they come up right these bubbles they come up. So, bubbling noise you can hear that is a cavitation the bubbling that happens. Then the vibration when the compressors they generate in general the mechanical vibrations that could be transmitted through the chiller housing to the various pipes and it can produce various kind of hums, buzzes and rattling kind of sounds. Then the motor noise. So, electrical motors in the compressor, so it depends on how the compressor is operating. So, in most of the modern compre uh, compressors use electrical motors and these electrical motors can emit some kind of whirring or humming sound due to the rotation of the motors shaft. Then obviously, because it is a mechanical system it has various you know parts and the, the parts degrade over time they have some kind of surface roughness present and whenever they are coming in contact the wear and tear and the contacting just the mere contracting uh, of the various internal parts within the compressor can cause the squealing some kind of screeching or grinding noise. And this, this is the noise due to the friction between the components of a compressor and the higher is this noise the more you can know that the compressor is getting old and the parts they are getting worn out. Some debris are collecting the parts are getting worn out. and there is not very sufficient lubrication which is causing this lot of friction and creating this sharp noise. Then fans and blowers, what are the typical mechanisms? Some of, so as uh, you know already discussed in the previous module, a typical fan or a blower in any mechanical system, it creates airborne noise due to turbulence and also due to the uh, blade pass frequency. So, there could be additional you know phenomena such as the imbalance. Suppose there is some kind of manufacturing defect in the uh, fan blade, it is after all a rotating machinery. So, when it is rotating due to some imbalance that might be there because of some manufacturing defect or just because the fan is getting worn out and getting damaged, all of this would produce some Im noise due to the imbalance and it would typically be a high pitched whine or vibration and it would typically correspond to the rotational frequency of the fan. Then we obviously have the aerodynamic turbulence when the movement of the air is over the fan blades it can create a lot of whooshing, humming or kind of a buzzing sound especially at the high speeds or if the fan is not being properly aligned and it is creating a lot of turbulence in the air flow. So, improper fan design and improper alignment of the fan blades can lead to or increase the turbulence in the air. Then blade fouling which means that simply that the fan is getting older and the blades they are being deposited with these dirts and the debris they are building up on the fan blades and they are creating these additional noise or cause them to be out of balance creating louder sounds during operation. So, this is the blade foiling noise where you know because of the dirt and the debris the noise is being created it can act as mass imbalance. Okay. Then we have the blade pass frequency. So, now we have the blade pass frequency which is like kind of a tonal noise. So, why is this noise created? It is simply because of the rotation of the blades. As the fan is moving, the blades are rotating and they are cutting the air around it. And this phenomenon of the blade rotation and the cutting of the air, it is creating noise. And obviously, it is going to correspond to the rate at which the air is being cut by the blades, which will be given by the blade pass frequency given by this formula. So, the number of revolutions per second multiplied by the number of blades. Then what are the mechanisms of noise generation in the chillers 
obviously the chiller unit it is responsible for cooling and during the defrosting process the noise is generated in the defrost cycles what happens the process of the melting of the ice or the frost from the evaporator coils it can generate a lot of clattering dripping or some kind of gurgling sounds then there is also electrical noise which could be due to in the form of this arc noise where it is a buzzing or some kind of crackling noise which may occur if the electrical components they are malfunctioning or they are under strain in the chiller ok. So, due to the malfunctioning this arc noise can be generated in the form of buzzing or crackling. Then relay or switch noise is there. So, what is the relays is like the clicking on and off the switching uh, the switches are engaging and generating various kind of mechanical clicking sounds. Then condenser coil can also produce noise in the chillers. The condenser coils first of all there is air flow turbulence. So, when the air is passing through the condenser coil it will create a lot of whistling buzzing or whooshing sound because of the turbulence in the air flow. Then uh, the corrosion or the fouling of the condenser coil because of the lot of over time as the dirts are happening, the coils are corroding it may cause the air flow to become even more uneven leading to an additional source of noise. Then uh, definitely ducts are a major part of the HVAC system. So, what happens in duct? It is like a confined acoustic cavity ok and typically the frequency uh, of uh, the fundamental frequency of any duct is proportional to C by 4 L like that. Every duct has got its own fundamental frequency depending on the geometry of the duct which is typically the length of the duct and when the fluid is flowing through the duct or when the air is flowing through the ducts the coolants are flowing then what happens is that because of the fluid flow sometimes the flow fluid flow can set the duct. Uh, and it could excite the duct at its resonance frequency and when it excites the duct at its resonance frequency sharp tonal sounds are produced by the duct. So, duct resonance becomes a very common source of noise in the ducting of the HVAC system. Then just the phenomenon of the flow of the fluid and the hydraulic uh, the flow of the fluid creates this hydraulic noise. So, just you know the gushing of the water or the flow of the air itself creates noise because of the turbulence and cavitation noise is in the form of the bubbling of the liquids. So, these are some of the major types within the ducts. So, what are the noise control strategies? So, now we know that these are the ways in which noise is being produced in the various components in an HVAC system. So, applying this knowledge what can we say about the noise control strategies? So, the proper design of blare fans, chillers, the cooling towers and various other components definitely is important. These are the generic things for every mechanical system you need to have properly designed parts and you need to do regular maintenance regular cleaning and lubrication to avoid the noise due to the fouling imbalance or uh, misalignment. Then there could be modifications done to the duct itself to tone down the duct noise it could be the ducts could be made more smoother in design without any sharp bends or they could have flow diffusers installed. So, when we were in the previous module when I was teaching you have already discussed that the least resistance you offer to the flow of the air or the flow of the fluid inside a duct the lesser will be the noise produced. So, obviously, if this kind of duct ducting system is there it is going to be more noisy whereas, a duct with more smoother bends is going to be less noisy it will create less turbulence and less disturbance to the air flow more streamlined design could be thought of and then we could also have some flow diffusers installed which could diffuse the flow. So, even if there is some turbulence here by the time it passes through the diffusers the flow becomes more laminar in nature. And just like in the automotive system you have these silencers in the exhaust pipe in the same way you can have silencers installed in the ducts or the duct silencers and they typically involve Helmholtz resonators and the perforated panels and various other kind of absorption resonance based absorption phenomenon is used.
So, the resonance based absorption phenomenon is used in these kind of silencers. Then the fan plates they can be designed. So, various kind of CFD analysis could be done to see that what fan blades they lead to lesser turbulence, they lead to a more smoother air flow and that kind of fan blade design could be installed in the system. So, this is going to bring uh, down the noise level of the fans. Then uh, we can have isolation mounts which is all the vibrating parts should be installed not directly on the ground or the hard reflecting walls, but rather through the isolation mounts they could be installed to the rest of the ground ceiling or any other hard reflecting surface. Then vibration resilient mounts could also be used. Flexible ducts and piping systems could be installed once again to bring the duct noise down and this could be installed to bring the vibration based noise down. This will bring down the vibration induced noise down, this will bring down the duct noise and this is again going to bring down the duct noise. Okay. All of this will bring down the duct noise and this will again bring down the vibration based noise and this will bring down the air flow noise or the simply the fan noise. So, in that way you know these strategies could be implemented and because at the end of the day even after implementing these strategies always these strategies may not always be sort of feasible maybe that the noise control design is hampering with the performance of the HVAC system. So, if that is the case when there is a clash between the noise control strategy and the performance of the device sometimes the manufacturer would prefer the performance of the device over the noise. So, even after these strategies sometimes the noise level could still be up and not every strategy be possible to be implemented within the system. So, in that case you can simply enclose it within the acoustic enclosures, keep it away from the rest of the people and then the chiller, cooling tower, these various units could be encapsulated inside these barrier, barrier housings. The pipes and the ducts they could be you know acoustic insulation covering could be there, it is very common in various things. Suppose this is your pipe or kind of duct. Then you have these acoustic insulation that is covering these various pipes. It looks like the form of insulation tapes, but they also serve the purpose. They not just serve the purpose of thermal insulation, they also serve the purpose of acoustic insulation. Okay, so, with this we close the case study for noise control in the HVAC system and we close the lecture series here. And uh, I would like to thank the teaching assistants for this course, which are my PhD scholars who have you know helped with me to develop the content of this course. These are Chetan, Ashok Chalurkar, Mohmo, Minthu and Siddharth Srivastava, they are all involved and they would be interacting with you through the discussion forums and through the websites and they would be helping you to resolve your queries. Then I would definitely like to thank the e-learning center at IIT Rurki for giving me a platform to put up this online course for all the avid enthusiasts in the field of noise control and definitely Indian Institute of Technology Rurki because I am an employer here and they have given me an opportunity to disseminate my knowledge through the e-learning center and the NPTEL scheme. So, with this uh, I hope you enjoyed this lecture series and thank you for listening.